welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick, with the City of Hampton's Communications and Marketing Department. And today we're going to uh, get to know the chairman of the planning, chairwoman at the Planning Commission a little bit better. My guest is Gay LaRue. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for taking time out to come um, down here. And let's talk about you and your background. You've been in Hampton for a while, but you're not a native. Correct. I actually was born and raised on the West Coast in the Central Coast area of the state of California. But I moved here in my early 20s to the East Coast, to the, to the Hampton Roads area, and lived over in Virginia Beach for a number of years. Now, what brought you here? I discovered Hampton and thought, what a wonderful place this is. It was basically through two aspects. One was sailing. I took up oh. sailing in my 40s. I was not a young person like many are who do and loved it and discovered that Hampton is a real sailing center in this area. And also I came to an event in the downtown Hampton area before the hotel was there, before some of the new uh, large buildings. It was a little bit kind of run down, but it was a waterfront event and we were standing on a dock next uh, on the river and I had no idea where the water that, that you went out from the dock, you know, where it went, where it led to in either direction. And I saw a large sailing vessel come sailing up the river. It was a, and the image of kind of a old Chinese junk is with a interesting squared off sails and the ribs across. And I, where did that boat come from? I thought, because it was not just a little sailboat, it was a pretty good sized vessel. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, it came from Hampton Roads. I said, hmm, it's because the river curves right there, I couldn't see. So I discovered there was a river off of the bay that comes right into the center and the heart of the city. And I just said, uh, being a real waterfront loving person, I said, wow, I said, I think I'd like to live here one of these days. And about a year later, I found the opportunity to move over here. And so I did. And, uh, and, I, and I've been very involved in, fell in love with the downtown area of Hampton right away. That's, you know, just called out to me and said, you must come here and be a part of our community. So I became very involved in some of the revitalization efforts for downtown over the years and was served as a founding president of the Downtown Hampton Development Partnership, which is a business improvement district in downtown, with the idea being to create a, an organization that could, number one, advocate for downtown, for the businesses there, um, to also do marketing and kind of get the word out about downtown. In the meantime, some of the newer buildings came along. The hotel was built right. and the office building. And then pretty soon the Rupert Sargent building went up and we started having a bit of a skyline. And we also uh, found that people who come to visit Hampton by water on their sailboats say, what an a wonderful place, what a wonderful harbor this is. You know, why don't you advertise this? Why isn't it in the books Sailing that the magazines, people who are right. traveling up and down the bay and the intercoastal waterway use? So that was another purpose for that group was to really work on developing the uh, waterfront as an attraction for boaters. And from that, I got involved in other things. One thing led to another and, and the, um, eventually the planning commission. All right, so what do you do um, out, out for a living? What is your? I'm a financial advisor. Okay. Uh, I've been doing that for um, about 30 years and uh, I work at Wells Fargo Advisors and uh, in downtown Hampton, and which has been through many iterations. P some people may remember it as Wachovia Securities. Right. Some may go back as far as Wheat First Wheat Securities. First. Oh, I didn't realize was. that was even the same. Same. Same people, same building, same desk, different business cards. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> okay, so now, how long have you been on the Planning Commission? I believe this is my fifth year. All right, and your peers named you chair this year. I'm sorry? Uh, you were named the chair this year. This selected year, Selected yes. by the other members. Yes. Um, explain to people, I think there's some confusion about what the Planning Commission does versus City Council. Um, 
what kind of actions you you guys hear and then how you make the recommendations. Okay, it can be confusing. I understand that sometimes even for us. <laughs> Uh, but basically what the Planning Commission does is make recommendations to the City Council. The Planning Commission does not make any final decisions, uh, but looks at specific aspects of a certain case and then makes a recommendation for action onto the City Council. Now the things that, the criteria that we use are basically uh, based on zo the zoning ordinance, based on the uses that are allowed in a particular zone, what we call land use issues. Right. City Council can look at many things that the Planning Commission does not look at. But what the Planning Commission does is pass on to the Council a recommendation that says, okay, these, this particular um, application, the, the uh, project that this applicant wants to build or wants to develop meets our the city's requirements relative to the size of the building and the building materials and the amount of parking that they have and, and the location of it that is appropriate. If it's a business, you don't want to put a business right in the smack in the middle of a neighborhood or next to a school or a neighborhood school, that sort of thing. So, so those are the kinds of things that we look at. Then the city council can go on and look at many other things like, is this a, a kind of business we even want to have in our community. They can look at that. We are not allowed to do that. And, and you have public hearings um, on all these same issues. So, so it's sort of like council sets the big policies and the zoning and the council, well, ratifies what the citizens have said in terms of the community plan or the master plans. And then those are sort of your guidebooks. That's correct. That's absolutely right. The community plan is a big guidepost and the community the citizens have a lot of input into the community plan. In fact, it's, it's developed basically on, on what the citizens say they want to have in mm -hmm. their city, what they want the city to look like, what they want it to be like, what kind of services they want it to have, and what, what, what kind of ambiance, you might say, even, that they want to have. In this last iteration of the community plan, we talked about wanting to become a, a very, um, recognizable coastal city of a nature perhaps of like a Cape May or, or South Florida. So uh, yes, the community plan guides everything that we do as well as certain state regulations, a zoning ordinance is, is particular to the city of Hampton, but it is based on mandates that come down from the state. And the, plan the planning commission is actually mandated by the state as well. It's in the, in the state charter. So. So we have just very specific things. And sometimes people will come into the public hearing and, and, and have a very strong emotional appeal for their position, which we can't really look at because mm -hmm. we have to look only at the specifics. Does the use, is it appropriate for the, the spot that people want to put it in? If it's a restaurant, do they have the right number of seats? If they want to live entertainment permit, you know, what is the sound level going to be? Um, and not so much, well, we just don't really want to have a restaurant right, you know, close by as some um, as can happen with uh, in a public hearing with citizens coming in and mm -hmm. voicing their, their opinions. Uh, I've noticed um, from coming to a lot of the, the Planning Commission and the City Council public hearings that a lot of times a neighborhood will, even in an area that's been sort of designated commercial or that, you know, everybody wants it to be a park or a civic center or a library. You know, they don't want the gas station. They don't want the drugstore. They, you can't have that many <laughs> civic publicly owned properties. We can't afford it. There has to be, you know, commercial somewhere. But I think there's an, an emotional level a, in a neighborhood right. that has a hard time you know, it's almost a not in my backyard or not here kind of a thing. That, that's very difficult personally, I think, for some of you when, you when you go about casting that vote. Actually, for the Planning Commission, it's not as hard. For the City Council, ah, much harder. Because you do have certain rules we you do. have to follow, right? We do. And if, 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 an, if an application meets all the requirements, then we are obligated to approve it and to pass on a recommendation of approval. 
no matter what the, the, you know, the emotional appeal might be to do, make some other decision. The city council really does need to weigh in all of those public comments and, and we do take those into consideration. But if, if all the objective criteria are met, we have to really justify a decision not to approve. Mm -hmm. Whereas the city council can take all those other things into consideration as well they should. That, you know, right, right, that there's different levels of consideration, right. so it does make a lot right. of sense. And we kind of vet the land use aspect of it mm -hmm. for the council, so they don't have to deal with that part of it. So they can say, okay, this meets land use requirements, but there are these other things, so do we need to take them into consideration? And that land use you know, emphasis, I noticed at the last meeting, um, you know, uh, there was a p potential rezoning for a drugstore. And I kept saying, or, and, and a lot of the speakers would say for a drugstore, and the planning department, which is essentially your staff in this effort, kept saying, it is for commercial use that allows blah, 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 that, that you all really are not looking at. Here's the proposal of what's going to be here, but let's talk about the land usage and what it allows for the long term. You may rezone for something, that then, you know, businesses change, they fail, they move. You're really creating a long-term land use plan for the city. Exactly. And in that particular situation, the, it was not just that the drugstore might go into that spot, but it's a, it was school. There was a, a school that was wanting to expand. Mm -hmm. and, and to make their expansion work and uh, and also meet the potential future needs of the drugstore, the, decision, the, the request was to rezone the property in such a way that the school could do their expansion and the drugstore could move over there. That was a complicated one. They're not usually it was that complicated. hard. <laughs> no, as a matter of fact, we have not had over the last few years since I've been on the commission, we've not had very many complicated situations because people haven't been developing. You know, mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. have not been investing. And, I think we're moving into a period where we're going to start seeing more of that. You may be much busier. I mean, I remember the Wawa, um, that Wawa at Aberdeen and Mercury, you know, was one where a lot of people in the larger part of the city were thrilled to see Wawa come in. And, but it was a difficult situation for the that neighborhood. One was difficult. But I do see more and more um, business startups and applications. So I hope you're right, right. that that is a right. good sign. I hope so too. That the economy's <laughs> turning around and right. we're going to see right. some growth. Right, right. We're keeping our fingers crossed for, for Hampton. We think Hampton may be on the cusp of, uh, of really being able to move into a, a period of time with a lot of growth and a little bit of change of direction and really becoming kind of a, a, the, the center crown jewel of Hampton Roads that we would like it to be. I think so, too. Well, thank you. Thank you for that insight and for a chance to talk with you. Um, thank you for having me. I've really enjoyed it. This has been great. You're welcome. Okay, well, thanks, and thank you for watching. I hope you've learned a little bit more about Gay LaRue and also what the Planning Commission does. Thank you.